basically keep our vessel running and also feed us, which is very, very important. So we are really grateful for them. And um, I think two of our cooks are Ukrainian, if that's if I'm not mistaken. So um, thank you for taking the time to learn that. And uh, I'm a little scared to say that to them, so maybe I'll just ask them myself how to say hello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is this boulder is so different from the surrounding yeah. manganese-covered substrate. That's I don't know why that is. It reminds me of pieces of older flows that have broken off and been carried by subsequent flows, okay. but I really don't know. Hmm. I'm not a geologist. What's that? Roger. Welcome back, Mia. Did you see any sharks out there? No, Val asked, but I was uh, trying to run to get back in here. So as we were this morning, as we were, or afternoon, as we were eating lunch, um, we heard rumors of shark sighting outside the port side of the boat. And then it turns out there were, I think, two or I don't know if there were more white uh, oceanic white tip sharks that were hanging out around the vessel. And here it's a really great day, so really awesome weather, and the ocean is pretty much like glass. It's really flat. Um, this may have been the Pacific Ocean that they saw, so <laughs> that they named it after. Um, so we were really blessed to see um, those creatures and observe them and they actually hung out by the boat for quite a while I think um, 20 minutes and then they came back again and uh, but by then we had to start our watch but I think they hung out for a little while more too yeah they've been spotted over multiple days uh, yeah. yeah yeah we heard one of the other watches saying on a recovery of our I think our last dive they did also see some white tips hanging out with a bunch of school of fish as well. Yeah, there were, I think, uh, two white tip sharks, at least two or three, and there were several mahi mahis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mahi. They have nice images of those. I'm going to probably let uh, Atlanta come right on top of us here so we can go 
battle between the pigs here together. We have a little downhill here to go over down the hill to the next uh, next peak. Yeah, it looks like it's a saddle. So we're at waypoint six right now. Are we past waypoint six? We just passed it. We're about, I think, probably 70 meters, 60 meters away. Oh, so are we near to the summit or near to where we were aiming to go? I think there are eight waypoints. Yeah, waypoint eight is about 150 meters away. From where we are now. From where we are now, but we have to um, go a little bit west and then north. 150 meters? 850. 850 meters, correct. Yeah. So we're 615 meters away from waypoint 7, and then we'll turn north and go 305. Got it. Yeah, another one of those polyopogon sponges uh, with a crinoid, and it looks like there's a sea star at the base of it. The common name for the crinoid is sea lily, is that correct? Sea lilies, yeah. Oh. Is this and another right. try? Pom pom and anime, the deeper name Oh, not an urchin. Sorry, I thought it was an urchin. Or was it an urchin? I'm not sure. Looks like an anemone, right? Yeah, I think you're right. some crinoids on the rock. An eel? Or a, a fish? Yeah, yeah, it's one of those uh, halosaurids again. They're not true eels, I believe. But eel-like fishes, definitely. They fall in that eel-like category. I 
Yeah, right. Yeah, we're coming down a pretty steep hill here on the next side of that ridge. So. So I'm trying to stay somewhat under you, so we're not, so you don't have to come down into the hill. Or staying closer to you than usual. Can I uh, look to the north just a bit now? Or look to the north. Yeah. down uh, five meters. Can we have a quick look at the other side of the sponge? This um, is all the animals are on the upwind side. Yeah, something pinkish, side. probably a few right arms and yeah, a bunch of ophiroids. There, the the hydroids growing on the polypogon sponge with a crinoid. Uh, Definitely lots of uh come down a couple more meters for me. Yeah. That's good, thanks. Just needed a little bit to get around here. That is great. Thank you so much. Dan, so you said that the current was coming from the opposite side of that sponge? Sorry? Dan, sorry. Uh, I think they're busy. It's okay. The current was uh, all the side that the animals were on. That was the, uh, the one weird side. Very apt Whatever description. Whatever that word is for <laughs> where, where the, the where the current was come hitting, yeah. There's a falling down. Current is to the, the uh, uh, <coughs> southwest, pretty. Venus stiff. light trap and that was on the sea floor. So we had a question in the chat earlier about um, deep sea currents and what causes them. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it does have a lot to do with like the difference in sal um, salinity and temperature, which creates different densities of water, and um, those different densities See move against each other up there and, you're and uh, to create those up. deep sea flows. No, not yet. Well, know where we are now. They also asked if uh, the deep sea currents are influenced by tides, and I don't know that one, if anyone know about... So, no, sorry, I could not hear you. If the deep sea currents are influenced by tides. Uh, at this depth, no. No, okay. No. But the tidal effect on the... Uh, shallower currents they because of Ekman spiral indirectly they end up affecting the okay, whole water yeah. column but they're not directly under the thing. And 
then if you are too busy, um, there's a question about uh, piloting, if you could take it, or we can also come back to it. Uh, Dan has SPL off, so. Okay, so busy. <laughs> no worries. He's fighting the current a bit here. Yeah. Yep, so looks like some challenging currents as we move up to waypoint eight, um, up the side of the seamount. For viewers just joining us, the seamount does not have a Dana, name. Is that blinking camera? Is that coming up the raw feed or is that happening when it goes through the... Uh, uh, Tyler. Looks like it's losing its sink. Right, it doesn't have a name yet. It doesn't have uh, a name yet. Seamount yeah. number 12. Seamount, oh, is that the number that is? The one looking oh. at the push course. Number 12, unnamed seamount number 12. And this is tw 60, roughly 60 I nautical. I switched it to the other uh, Tyler and it, it's glitching on both uh, head one and head two. So maybe if you poke around and look at the uh, signal before it goes into the Tyler's. Yep, he's not on SPL. Okay. Roughly 60 nautical miles northwest of Ho-Lani-Ku, or Kire Atoll. And we are currently moving towards the summit, which is at Around a depth it. of 15, about 1,500 meters. And we started the dive at 20, about 2,400 meters. So we made about 100 meters um, ascent along the side of this seamount. And we are, as um, is usual with our seamount dives, we're collecting high resolution imagery and we will take physical samples for um, species of priority or if there are um, novel uh, associations or similar biological observations. Geological samples will also be taken. Um, I is it every kilometer? Bit in the Approximately. Approximately every kilometer and also at the start and the end of the dive? Or just the beginning? Yeah, I think at the, the start of the dive and if, if available at the end, if it works out mm. in terms of frequency. But All right. And also we are, would opportunistically collect um, ferromanganese nodules. Correct. Yeah, we haven't seen many. But we haven't seen. We have not seen we, them. We see lots of manganese crust, mm -hmm. but we haven't seen those. Okay, Jacob, we can turn and look. Shape uh, nodules three, one, five. We'll run over and So the nodules are more uh, round or spherical. Um, I have not seen one in person, but I. They look like furry melted cupcakes. Mm, okay. But that's just, <laughs> I'm not an expert. <laughs> but it should be obvious when we see it. It is. Okay. And geological samples are collected to help uh, determine several things, but uh, one uh, important objective of those is to determine whether, or try to understand whether this seamount was formed over the Hoyans hotspot or is uh, Cretaceous in origin, so a different, um, owing to a different origin. And we are doing all of this in the sacred realm of Po, which is sacred to native Hawaiians in a protected, uh, federally protected area called the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. And um, we are here with the blessing and permission of the native Hawaiians who are the resource owners of this area and uh, it is a very special place for them where every organism that we see uh, up even to the rocks is considered um, an ancestor or relative so we recognize that as well. Yeah, and currently we are seeing some beautiful uh, bamboo coral webs with some chrysogorgia and also a metallogorgia, or two metallogorgias. And one of, uh, one, at least one polyopergon sponge.
come up a bit now. Coming up. Let's see if I can move off to your left or get the tether out of your face there. An enemy? Yeah. Roger. Yeah. Works for me. Uh, black coral? Yeah. Pasty pasties? Mm -hmm. oh, We're oh. learning! <laughs> okay. So the black corals... Uh, it comes and goes. Um, when I switched over to the... Uh, when I put it in the head one, it was also... It was glitching in both. So the black corals, al know, although many of them are, or or maybe like orange or uh, another, or yellow in color, that. they're so named it's for the black the skeleton, right? Yes. Yeah. I think most of the black corals have like a reddish, yellow, orange tinge to it, but there are also some white, uh, oh, more okay. white black corals. I haven't seen them, I've just seen images of them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a skeleton that gives them yeah, the name, yeah. yeah. Again, a uh, Volteria sponge with crinoids, hydroids, and ophiroids going on. Yes, well occupied. <laughs> Bamboo coral webs, cup corals. You see them swaying in the current there. Yeah, oh, that is new. The yellow. Oh, that's a crinoid. Sorry, the way it was sitting. A big sponge. Yeah, it's another one of this polyopogon. Yeah. Sponges, and we can see several of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just to get a sense of scale for viewers, the two lasers that are on screen are um, roughly 10 centimeters, sorry, exactly 10 centimeters apart. <laughs> And or, or about four inches. That's the laser position, posi precision there. <laughs> really helpful. Yeah. Yeah, very helpful. We found it quite difficult to do the rec site surveys yes. without those lasers. Yeah. The problem of scale was difficult. Yes, so for many of the organisms that we see here on the Hercules view, um, if we were standing next to them, some of those sponges would be about waist tall or taller, yeah, or taller, or taller than, a, than a person. Yeah. And some of them are very tall, I feel. Yes. Yeah. Or can we just scale, but... That would be um, one really cool thing. So one of the other SEFs, uh, Daniel Kinzer, he does a lot of, like, um, what, I don't know what you call it, photogrammetry, but oh. also... Um, making 3D models, mm -hmm. um, and he made a model of the ship that you can walk through, so it'd be really cool to be able to like put yourself next to a sponge next in VR to, yeah. to see like how tall it is next to you. Yeah, I but I know. think we would need like precise measurements, which we don't mm -hmm. have always, but those are pretty big. Yeah, those would probably be waist high for somebody like yeah. my height, but... Uh, Not for Daniel Kinzer. No. <laughs> <laughs> probably more like me. me. Height. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, some of those big octocorals fans are quite sure yes. are much taller than me. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, the uh, that, ones yeah. 
on the previous seamount that we were, was that that we had the very tall, the big tall yeah. The big yes. Yeah, I really wanted to just like read a book sitting underneath yeah. it, you know, yeah. like a tree. I was calling <laughs> them the banyan trees of the deep sea, kind of spread out. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if Dan is listening or next. Um, that could be your next project to get a sense of scale of like if we were walking on the seafloor. How many like huge things we would come upon? Yeah, I would kind of take away that human desire of traveling to <laughs> places that I've never been to. You can just go there in VR instead, yeah. without you know disturbing the peace. Yeah, just another example of how um, advances in technology are helping us. Um, learn and explore new places in uh, the least invasive way possible. Yes, that is important. Mia, are you guys still pretty busy in the front row? Oh, sorry, I can't hear you. Depends what you need. Um, it was just a question about the lasers, but it, it's fine if we can. It can obviously wait. No problem. What's the question? Um, the question was just: Is there a particular reason why the lasers are green, or, and if we can change the color? Yeah, just more about the lasers. Okay. After we get through this rocky uh, area, I'll ask. Yeah, with strong current. Yeah. Because yeah. green's the best color. <laughs> So this is a bamboo in the in the left corn left bottom left. Yeah, can make no headway sideways. I can make no headways during a lateral right. It just sits there, stuck. Yeah, it is. It's quite a big sponge, too. And we can see all of them in the Atalanta view and get also a sense of how, yeah. just how big they are. Massive they are. Yeah, it's gone. Funny how these big ones have relatively fewer organisms and the smaller sponges are just really overcrowded with uh, <laughs> a lot of life. Yeah, I think it has got something to do with the uh, texture and the surface area or the positioning of the vault area versus the uh, these uh, elephant ear sponges, the poliopogods. Mm. I also wonder if because this is a larger mass, if it attenuates more of that flow and makes it... Maybe. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I was just guessing from those lasers that mm. that sponge is at least, you know, 10 times the height of those lasers, so 40, the, the 48 sponge. inches. Maybe like this big. Four feet. Four feet, yeah. 1.5 meter, approximately. And these white spots are the cup corals? Yeah, yeah. the cup corals is probably a black coral, which was on the rock, or the ledge over there. Anemone? Yeah, I, th I think we're crossing an anemone. Closed up in that
Yes. <coughs> you pulled me up there when you came up. I know we're waiting to ask Dan a question about the lasers, but well, I also have a question of why Atlanta breeze. doesn't have lasers, if that's something that could be modified to add um, as a backup, just in case something like that were to happen again, where we yeah. couldn't use Little Herc like we wanted, but could still have that scale, yeah, I was but thinking about that also. I'm not how sure. Difficult would it be yeah. To yeah, I'm not sure how difficult that would be. I am not an engineer, just very yeah. interested in engineering. <laughs> As long as it's explained to us, as long as I'm mm -hmm. not figuring Yeah. Yeah, my guess would be it's not difficult to, to mount lasers, but, but however, I think most of their investigations are, you know, 4,000 meters and above. Yeah. Most of the things they look at, so it's, it's rare that they mm. use Atalanta as a sole ROV. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Just if it's convenient would, would be like wise to probably add it just in case again mm -hmm. another beautiful bamboo whip yeah so hercules and atlanta atalanta are both really amazing pieces of engineering and um, we have a great team on board who are constantly troubleshooting all of the like thousands of small moving parts that that go into um, these vehicles that we use for exploration. This one. Uh, this yeah, one. I know there's the a video that um, is available. I'm not sure where, but I've seen it used in interactions where it kind of shows the model of Hercules and oh. it like oh. blows out all of the parts and oh, kind of spaces them out and shows you. Um, I think I've seen a little bit of it. I think it's also yeah, part of the, the interactions. Uh, the I'm not interactions, sure yeah. Yeah, so if we have that available push. publicly or not, but it's really cool. I think we should. I would have to do some digging to figure out if it's on our website or on the YouTube channel, but I think they do do like um, a blowout, mm -hmm. like you take apart all the different little pieces of Hercules and just see like what really goes into it. So yeah, it's really cool. There one. Try and stay a little closer to you. you know. Well, we're fine. Going up the hill here. The setting's good. Yeah, right to that, thanks. Yeah, so on the Nautilus website, there's an education tab and then there's uh, like so many resources for educators and just I think people who are curious to learn more about the ocean and exploration and how it's all done and there's an engineering tab and right. I believe this would also help explore um, a lot of the different aspects of Nautilus that has to do with engineering including Hercules so there's a um, uh, animation. You watch your altitude down. Give it twenty. Narration. Teaching about the two body, the dual body ROV system. Um, how Hercules works. Hercules. Some of Hercules' capabilities, like its arm that we use to grab things underwater. So, a lot of really cool stuff. I know for one, my high school did not have a robotics team when I was going to school there but if it had I'm sure I would have been like really interested in joining and uh, 
learning more about that just because it's so interesting. Yeah, that would be such a cool club to yeah. be a part of. I've always been very interested in those kinds of things, but never really had a chance. Yeah, same. Like, unless I took that up as a profession. Some, uh, not some, a gorgia a Brahma coral web. A brucingid after a long time, several cup corals. looking off a ledge. That's interesting. The view from Atlanta is very interesting. It took me a while to understand how we were positioned, but Is this sediment that's on the rock here, or is it a uh, aspect of, of its. Yeah. There's yeah. definitely some sediment. I suppose yours, I think a shrimp is floating by. Oh, I don't see the shrimp. Is I missed small it. Red, <laughs> small one. Shrimp spotting. Yeah. They move so quickly compared to a lot of the other. Um, animals that we've seen. Absolutely.
at these poor Chrysogorgia. Are you guys good for another five zero at three one five? Or do you want to go a little right. more northern? Right. Good, good for another move. Bridge nav. So welcome, we have some new viewers tuning in from all over the world. Uh, so from Spain, the United Kingdom, from Guam, the Netherlands, Norway, New Zealand, Philippines, Puerto Rico, Sweden, Taiwan, Japan, Australia, Canada, and the United States. Welcome everyone. So it is it's about 2 p.m. Hawaiian time here on the Nautilus and on our dive. We're about halfway through our watch. We are the 12 to 4 watch. Um, so we got in here at noon and we'll be done at 4 p.m. just in time for dinner. And um, we are here diving, exploring on an unnamed seamount, um, roughly 60 nautical miles northwest of Ho'olani'ku or Kure Atoll in the Papahanaumokuakea Marine Nas National Marine Monument. And we are currently at a depth of 15, about 15,000 meters. Uh, and we started our dive last night at eight and we are expecting to be on deck tonight at eight again. So a 24 hour dive. It is now, it's a Monday here on the ship, um, September 18th, I believe. Although sometimes it's hard to keep track is it, of time. Is it Monday? <laughs> um, and we are actually- Monday and one day from ice cream day, so. Yes. <laughs> we are actually about two thirds, I think, or three fourths of the way through our expedition. We have 10 days left here uh, doing our ocean exploration and it's been a really great expedition with everybody, with uh, a great team and a great crew. And we do actually have a name for our expedition. So um, this expedition is named Ala Aumoana Kaiuli. And uh, this is a beautiful Hawaiian name, which translate, which has um, many meanings, but translates into um, path of the deep sea voyager, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been a very apt description of everything we've um, 
we've seen so far on our trip and on our voyage. And uh, we're looking forward to the rest of what the our rest of our 10 days bring. And thank right. you everyone who's followed along on our journey and on our dives online. And uh, we continue to welcome you to type some questions into the chat if you guys wanted to have a discussion or just follow along as we continue to dive on the seafloor. Sorry, Hans, did you have a... Nope. Nothing to add? Sounds okay. good. Okay. <laughs> also, yeah, you're doing great, by the way, Elsa, filling in for Kara. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> I'm sure viewers are missing Kara's voice, but I'm doing my best. She has such a nice, calming voice and calm demeanor, and I always feel very... Um, relaxed when she is uh, leading our um, our live stream. Not an easy role. You also do great. Thanks, Mia. Yeah, I think every every seat that everybody has here in the control van has Sorry, comes with comes with its own challenges and uh, everyone's been doing really great. It's a good watch. Yeah, I will say I really appreciate the extra science support this year that we have with you, Elsa. Um, but I think that's new. I don't think we've ever had, well, I've never had an extra science support. So, yeah, I really like that you're here. <laughs> it's very helpful. Um, Thanks. Yeah, you're good at science communication and the science. So it's great. Thank you. Yeah, um, I actually used to be a science communicator and educator before I transitioned into a research role. Um, and that's just sort of a lesson for anyone who, again, and I think we talked about it a lot, that there's a lot of different paths that you can take within marine science and uh, to get to marine science. And even within marine science, there's a lot of different aspects that you can move back and forth between. Even archaeology. Even archaeology, especially archaeology. <laughs> so we know from some of what Hans has talked about his journey, that he has started out as a scuba diver and then moved into uh, marine archaeology. Um, and he does have a background as a geographer, if, I'm right. not, if I've remembered Hans' journey correctly. Thank you, yes. <laughs> yes. If I've represented him well. <laughs> Another fellow geographer. It's really rare to find one. Yeah, the social absolutely. sciences are... Uh, still appreciate it no matter what <laughs> anyone says it's a social and a physical science yes yeah really it's awesome great that you have that experience as a communicator and then went into the research because i feel like there's a huge disconnect in how we communicate our research with the community and could be reasoning for why you know changes in, in the stem world and just the way we protect things and uh, the lack of understanding on the side of the community is not their fault um, and we should definitely try to communicate in ways that everybody can understand. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's not just scientific papers, but a lot of the stuff that OET does with their education materials. Yeah, and exactly. Even just these broadcasts, the exposure. So, so many people can learn from this. Yeah. And it makes it a much more enriching experience, you know, when you get people who... Um, might not necessarily be specialized in these areas or know a lot about it, but they're really excited. And I think one thing I really enjoy is explaining things that I'm excited about. And that's uh, something we've been able to do on this expedition. So really lucky to be here and we're happy to be here. How are things going in the front row? I've noticed we've been pausing a little bit. Is the current really difficult right now? Yeah, the current's it's pretty strong. Okay, thanks for the update. Yeah, so Dan's had... Ripping. Yeah, Dan's had SPL on to talk, but not listening, because he's, he's concentrating on on all that. Awesome. Thank you for letting us know. Yeah, and also now there's, like, large boulders and stuff, so... Yeah, looks more complicated terrain. Thanks for asking. Go on, uh, it limits my heading in this current, so limits my visibility and... Also, going downhill is painful. Yeah, it's really difficult from the back row to, un like, from the video to understand how difficult it is to maneuver yeah. the ROV. Yeah. Um, 
Dan with all of his expertise. RV's a lot slower to react. Yeah. Um, he makes it look easy, but I'm sure it's a very difficult task oh, no. that he's doing right now. Every time I look at the bubble camera, I freak out, so I don't look at <laughs> <laughs> And uh, last night, actually, in our watch this morning, our ROV intern, Jacob, had a chance to drive Hercules for the first time, and he did a really great job. And, uh, yeah. yeah. You did an amazing job, Jacob. Bruh, you guys gotta stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't parallel park. <laughs> I watched. I was watching out there, and then I heard Jane go, "Oh, I don't know if you can parallel park because that's not in our driver's test." <laughs> it um, is in our driver's test, but Hawaii's, they are just too lazy. They just don't like, go back already. <laughs> the trick is, you like your driver's test, go quick. Roll up auto windows, don't turn on the AC and tell them it's broke. <laughs> and then the instructor will be like, it's too hot. I'm yep. trying to hurry this you up. You pass already. Go out. <laughs> Would it be too difficult to collect a rock here? Do you? Right. Because of the current. Should we? Oh. No, no, no. You're fine. I can wait. <clears throat> Were you guys contemplating a sample? Yeah, I was wondering if, if it would be possible. Um, where since we've passed waypoint six and are nearing seven, um, if but if the current is too strong, I understand. I know Sorry, we're traveling downhill oh. right now. What do you want? Uh, I was just wondering if it would be a, a possible time to collect a rock from here since they look like they're sure, yeah. not in place. See anyone that you like? Sorry, Bridge. We're gonna collect a rock. Uh, Grapefruit size, yeah. wedge shaped. Roger. Get the black one. Choose from here, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a black one. Roger the black one. <laughs> so there's a metallic orange over the percentage. That's a rarity. What about this? Oh, that might be a little large. Uh, what about like this one? Is that large? I don't. That might be so part of all this. Yeah. What about that? Yeah. Or this? Uh, would Dan was looking down when he circled that, so uh, you might need to. I'll let you, you'll yeah. need to circle it again. Yeah, I don't know if that's loose or. Maybe this one here. Does that look good? I don't know if that's loose. Okay. Uh, might be a little large. Hmm. We just have to kind of Not poke sure. it and see. What about this one right in front of us here? Circle them, circle them. Too far. Uh, is that one? Yeah, the one below, yeah. That's big. They might all be loose. Yeah. Here, you pick up the rock. Oh. You pick. Oh. Did we all do that in you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No pressure, but uh, Atlantis running over you. Bridge nav, can you uh, hold position if you aren't already? Thank you. That's big. That might be too big. Close your jaws a little before you touch. Try not to touch them all the see way if, open. See if that's one right there. Pop the uh, T-nut. If you see the camera moving around, that means you're pushing the vehicle around. Or you can push it a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a little small. Uh, what I usually do is I'll close the jaws and I'll go poke them. 
Sorry for that. And if they move, then you can pick them up. If you lift up the uh, lift up the arm a little, I'll move the vehicle some. Swing, lift it up, swing the right a little. That could be a good one right there. Oh, or that. That's a nice one. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Right there in the bottom of the camera there under the laser. <laughs> Not helpful. mistaken Jake is picking up the rock so yeah thank you Jake are you full wide there video I'm in a little do you want me to go all the way out uh, okay. yeah go full wide for okay. him we'll make it easier so I can see the manipulator. That's cool. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. You got this, Jake. Freeze it and then lock your jaw. How do I lock them? The GR lock. Yeah. Yeah. So when you freeze, it locks it. And oh. uh, yeah. okay, if you hold that for a second. Roger. Okay, you can uh, zoom in there. Spin it a little bit. Yeah, really nice and slow. Victory roll. Do I have to take off GR lock? No, nope. oh, no. You want to leave uh, the gel lock on until you get it over the box. Mm. Not letting me roll it. Uh, if you hit that button now, that oh. rocker works nice and slow. It's proportional, so if you barely touch it, it goes slow. If you push it further, you know, it's like the joystick. Good science. Good. Yeah, nice wrap. Okay, so before you swing around, I'm gonna put this camera so that shows you how high your shoulder is. Yep. So as you swing around, especially if we're up against the hill, you're gonna lift that up. So you wanna lift that okay. predator, make that predator closer to that orange hose. And then I'm going to press the sample salvo, which will make it uh, easier for you to get it in the box here and if I can find the right button I think it's this one and probably uh, I don't, you have to tailor in nowhere she wants it probably the big box aft looks like it's empty yeah so uh, the forward boxes are both empty and then we have a starboard box F that is empty as well uh, the Big starboard aft box is empty. Yes. Yeah, so put it in that big. That'll be the easiest one to get it into. So you can tell on your uh, porch cam how far you are coming around. You just see it there in the uh, on the other two cameras. And as you can tell by all the battle scars on the box, you can brutalize the box a little. You want to use one of those two cameras to make sure you're actually in it. it the parallax error will. Yeah, there you go. So 
So when you unlock your jaws, they're going to want to tend to fly all the way open and hit the box. So be ready to close them again as soon as the rock drops. Oh. They should be able to bombs away there. So I'll hold the jaws closed and then I'll unlock it with my thumb. And then I'll slowly relax the jaws. If you just unlock it now, they'll fly open. And nice. Wonderful. That is sample 077. Great job, Jake. Thanks, Taylor Ann, and great job, Jake. Great job, Jake. We're all clapping for you. <laughs> you said 077? Yes, that's correct. Perfect. And then you'll, yeah, swing it back around and park it. Yes, aw. <laughs> Someone in the lab. Oh, is that cool, Chloe? Yeah. <laughs> I'll show it to you in the other camera so it'll be easier for you to figure out where it's supposed to be parked. You don't want to come all the way up on the shoulder there so it's not hanging out. So the elbow's probably still up pretty high. Careful there, it'll get up into the jewelry and the bumper. Roger. And you wanna, yeah, put the jaw away from the, so you don't stab yourself in the armpit. That's probably good there if you, uh, so if you Hold the jaw close button and uh, hit the blue button. It'll just fall down in where you need it to be. Do I need to press halt first or no? Nope. You can just press the blue button now. There's no lock valves in those joints, so it'll just gently park itself. Beautiful. Thank you. Well done. Might as well zoom in on the... Uh, Whatever that thing is while we're sitting here. Sorry, kind of, uh, kind of messed up the sea floor a little bit. I'm a hollow. Oh. Zoom Christ in. Christ the Yeah. Uh, metallic gorge. Oh. <laughs> With a crinoid. And a no right. Good, thanks. Looks like a little palm tree. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Nice job, Jake. Yeah. A very nice job. I failed miserably trying to get my first rock. <laughs> <laughs> Took me like three tries to get it. <laughs> Blessings, blessings. Now, just as a reminder, even the rocks in this special place are sacred to the native Hawaiian peoples. And so we're careful to follow our instructions and take only what's needed to understand and appreciate these seamounts and their history and the history of the Pacific Ocean. Jake, we're getting more um, shout outs in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no pressure, but one comment said, Jake's going through it with a worldwide audience. <laughs> 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 the world applauds you, <laughs> which is true. And uh, great job, Jake. Thank you. Yeah, very smooth collection. <laughs> Especially with the way you put it in the box. That's usually <laughs> challenging for a lot of people I've seen. Yeah, that was really good. I got Mr. Miyagi up here, uh, taught me everything I know. Yep, good to go.
Right here. Yeah, so don't ever let it be said that here on Nautilus is not a learning environment because they are letting you do it on the job, putting you in there, and giving um, young people opportunities to gain hands-on experience to do all of these really cool things. Yeah, really, oh, honestly, almost all of my confidence in STEM to being out here. Um, they, yeah, really give you good hands-on experience and encourage it. And um, I haven't had hardly any moments of, you know, discouraging um, when it comes to sampling and just all the different skills that you can learn. Everyone's pretty open to sharing their knowledge as well, uh, which is really cool. I, I had uh, looked it down a little there while we were stopped. So not sure where you had the camera before. So we had a question in the chat about um, when we were talking about our time zones, they were just asking how we deal with changing time zones and asking whether we align to local time or stick with the port of departure. And if I'm not mistaken, we are on always on local time, but so far we have been in the same time zone. Um, we traveled to the northwesternmost seamount and we were just a few degrees shy of crossing the international date line which would have put us in a different time zone but uh, so far we've stayed in the same one i think yeah so um actually that happened in uh with the last cruise when we were, when i was doing the mapping transit we don't always stay in the same time zone okay so as we cross through different utm zones um we would change when the uh, <clears throat> expedition leader, I don't know if his expedition leader or captain decided, um, with this cruise, they decided to mostly stay in this one time zone, even though we've we crossed over another UTM. Oh, okay. Um, which makes it so much easier, you know? So. Okay, so the answer is it, it's also up to the captain. Yeah, I don't know if it's the captain or expedition leader or who decides, okay. but um, it's not one way or the other. Okay. But it is, it, it is easier when you stay in one time zone. I think it's easier. I don't know about other people. Yeah, so is that why we use UTC time as opposed to any other time scale? Yeah, exactly. So that's the universal time for like documenting samples for a timestamp that we know it's going to be always in this time zone yeah. instead of jumping around, you know? Push in there real quick for this video. Yeah, if you got, uh, if there is a view on the quad stream right now, we do have a large red digital clock in front of us at all times. Okay, thanks. Look like a sea cucumber, maybe? What's that? I'm not sure. Yeah, I couldn't really tell. No, thank you yeah, I could see like extensions, but not. Taylor, can I, Taylor Ann, can I carry my rock to the, <laughs> of course to the lab can. tonight? Yeah, I'll write a note on the sheet <laughs> as a reminder. All right. <laughs> and remember, it's sample 077. 077. Seven. Ooh, yeah. lucky seven. Yeah. <laughs> Blessed. Angel the one taking right? it out <laughs> from the Push it there for ROV and carrying it into the lab. We have another cup coral and a small urchin. Probably in the family Sideroidea. Actually, we have two cup corals, and this kind of looks different from the other ones that we have been seeing with more darker polyps. Polyp. Okay. And tentacles. Sorry, I can't quite hold it. Thank Still you. There. So the cup coral is different to the other corals as it's not a colonial? Yeah, it's a, those are solitary uh, sclerectinian corals and uh, so hexachorals. Okay, so I think we are again 
We're seeing a Chrysogorgid, Chrysogorgia, a Coraliid, and a Sea Star. More towards the right. Another Metallogorgia with a Ophiroid and a Crinoid. Several Chrysogorgias. Another Sea Star. Lots of Cup Corals. There is something darker red or more towards the right, probably. Oh, there's a tiny glass sponge. A very small glass sponge. Probably a black talid. And yeah. uh, there was uh, another of the pom pom and enemies or the Nipponemas. They were saying there's something in the upper right. No, that's fine. We have seen it. Right we can it. continue. I was just letting Dan know. Oh, okay. Something you want to see? A pom pom and an amoeba, yeah. a coralomorph, right? Yeah, okay. not a coralomorph. Making sure I'm making that right. We don't, right we don't need to zoom in, do we? Uh, no, uh, we can no. continue. No. We want. can continue. Is that the one they were interested in possibly collecting? Not this one. Okay. Not this one. Yeah, we're still fine to zoom and everything. It's just with the breeze, my um, maneuverability is limited, so it's hard to come around sideways. I gotta kinda keep the nose into the current here. We can come around, this takes forever and it's painful. Thanks Dan, we'll keep that in mind. What's that? Just saying thank you, we'll keep that in mind. Right it. One of them, yeah. This is the metallic or the crime? This is the Metallogorgia uh, with the Crinoids. Yes, ma'am.
Looks like it's going to drop off pretty good here, so I'm going to wait for you. Wow, and that's steep. Downhill and the downhill in the current. So we'll put, uh, we'll wait for Atalanta to get uh, Roger. at least over her or out in the deeper water there before we try and come down. Let's see if we're going to find something to look at while we're waiting. What's that, Matt? What's that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, hey, that's another cry. No, I don't know my time to go, yeah? a really interesting geological um, texture as well. I wish I knew <laughs> um, what it was. In on this. I oh, pulled up a little fact sheet about different sheet flows or types of flows and it looks like he, this term might be lineated, the lines that you're seeing there. And then the yeah, botryoidal is the bubbly, but I'm not I'm I, not too sure. I do see the lines. Yeah, I was wondering about the oh, lines. Oh, you have the same guide up. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I just wasn't sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I think so. From a non geologist perspective. <laughs> Is that a little ophiroid in the inside curled in there? So I heard you say earlier it's uh, uncommon for this association or no, um I so for metallogorgias, uh, the mel metallogorgia melanotritis, they're always associated with an ophioid, okay. the Ophiocreus oedipus, but we don't always see them with a crinoid. The crinoids, are, crinoids here are using the metallogorgias or chrysogorgias to uh, perch themselves mm. above the sea floor and get an advantage. Yeah, and we've seen that in like the last three or four individuals, yeah. right? So this is more like an opportunistic utilization of the corals, but uh, the ophiroids are always associated with these. These ophiroids are always associated with this kind of metallic origins. Was it with the sponges that we don't often see the ophiroids, but we were seeing that earlier yeah. with the, yeah. Yeah, I think we're good on that zoom. Thank you so much. All right, still waiting for uh, Atlanta to. Is right. that a little anemone on the side, or something? A cup coral. Is it a cup coral? This one here. Go ahead, Jen. Yeah, that thing there. The one in the center. Yes, the thing oh, in the very I didn't center. See that. Yeah, that's one or something else. Sorry, what was that? That a sample? I just want to zoom on zoom, that. Zoom, please. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. She's soft It's a cup coral. <laughs> Can be. Zoom in there if you want. <laughs> That's Han's early guess. Probably correct. It is a cup coral. No, <laughs> no, no guessing about it. Ooh, oh, yeah. His expert. Um, identification it's a beautiful cup coral. yeah it's a cool view of the top yeah. of it yeah they're so beautiful very beautiful thank you so much yeah i'm not sure if this is quite lineated sheet flows or not but um apparently they form when molten lava 
moves out from under the edge of a solid crust. Um, so, yeah, it's quickly frozen into place as a lava surface solidifies. That's really interesting. I'm not sure if that's what we're looking at here, though, but there definitely are some lines. <laughs> what are the uh, bathymetry lines? How many meters there to the bottom? Yeah, but how far, what's the depth difference between the two bathymetry lines there? Just curious. Okay, can go in. So there was a question in the chat if the movement we're seeing on the organisms is caused by currents or from the ROV. And I think the ROV can produce some movement, um, but right now we are facing a really strong current on the side of the seamount, so it's most likely the current. Yeah, that movement there was definitely from the current. Northwest a little. Depending on how steep it is, we might I'll let you step away and I'll stay to the southeast. We'll find out here in a minute. Oh uh, wait, I lost the pot. Which way am I supposed to go here? Not that way. Imagine if you just uh, look maybe zero four five now. Uh, you have uh, more altitude than I do, which is a good thing. So. What's that? It's only 20 meter drop or so. Yeah. Good. a bit more if you want. Yeah, something like that. Let's see what the tether's doing there. Make sure it doesn't get snagged on the hill. No, you can't move it. Sure. Uh, you can put in 50. Get us out of here. So it's your gear, not mine? Yep, yep. Gonna have 
enough to. You got 30 meters under you, you're good for probably 10 now. You're out in the deep water, so. Can do the opposite of when we're going up, you know, you're more level. So just worried about the uh, tether getting blown into the rocks there. I think we're good though. You're far enough to the uh, west of me. So as we have the ROV moving through the water column, we can see um, the white sort of like snow floating by, which is called marine snow. And uh, this is basically organic material that is falling from the upper layers of the ocean and um, is a big source of food for a lot of the benthic um, creatures living down here. Uh, so that's um, one of the things that when we talk about that the creatures are trying to get up and like perch on other creatures is that they're trying to maximize their chance of um, catching some of this. So Posh and I have a question if you have time while we're kind of navigating through these oh, yeah, currents. Absolutely. We were, so in addition to the marine snow, um, what are some other examples of ways that, you know, down here, maybe there's not a lot of food. Um, so ways that creatures living down here might get uh, their energy or things to eat. Yeah, so we have mostly the filter feeders and the deposit feeders. So the sea cucumbers would be a good example of the deposit feeders. So there's a lot of organic material in the sediments, so they feed on the sediments and take out those organic material and excrete out the sediment. Particles are non biogenic component of the sediment. Okay. Uh, then there's definitely main so snow, which is the major uh, source. Uh, we have can smaller microscopic organisms which can be predated upon by the filter feeders. Um, and uh, then sometimes if there is a some dead organism that happens to reach the sea floor that is a very good source of nutrition and food for certain groups of animals What's then up? we do see some amount of predation happening like Bearing, yeah. the sea stars feeding yeah, on the I corals and yeah. things so there's a combination of a lot of factors so a combination of the filter feeders and then the scav what do we call them scavengers no, the, the deposit feeders deposit feeders yeah. yes and then predation yeah. So when you say microscopic, um, so it's plankton or what yeah, sort of organisms? So it's mostly like you have mice, small amphibods. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. So there's various kinds. Yeah. And also we have to understand that the organisms that are here, they're also dying and decaying and contributing yeah. to the carbon pool that the others can utilize. So. Uh, so if we were to uh, look at like uh, some ocean water from down here you would see a bunch of little or microscopic organisms uh, microscopic probably yeah i'm not okay. exactly sure th about the diversity but yes yeah. you would see like smaller it's like you see a lots of mice and uh, yes you see them. and there's a lot of larvae that's yeah. being excluded released by all of these so they get predated upon yeah and the crows yeah and it's true not just for the deep ocean, right? Any, yeah. Anywhere in the ocean, there's going to be microscopic creatures living in there that we can't see with the naked eye, but are living there and um, providing a source of food for a lot of other animals. So anytime you're in the ocean, you're never alone. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, you're going to have to come up. Speaking of food, it looks like it's about cookie time, <laughs> <laughs> which we always miss because we are on watch. So here on Nautilus at 3 p.m. in between meal times, they do put out um, some snacks or like sweet treats, and sometimes it's cookies, and those are like some of the best cookies I've ever had. Fresh so. baked. Fresh baked, yeah. It's What's the up? little things when you're out at sea for a long time. 
And we also, today is Monday, so yesterday was Sunday, and Sunday is ice cream Sunday. Um, so they feed us ice cream, and uh, it's something to look forward to also throughout the week. That's good there. Come back down uh, a couple meters, just five meters. Yeah, this is very steep and challenging here, I'm sure. Yeah, I think Dan has SPL off now um, to concentrate on, on this environment. We're uh, traveling downhill, which is hard, also mm -hmm. facing a current and all of these rocky yeah. features. Yeah. It's quite challenging. He makes it look, look easy, though. Yeah. There's a little crinoid perched on the rock. And maybe some cup corals. Yeah, I see some cup corals and a chrysogorgia. Oh, I missed a chrysogorgia. But yes, I see it now. Yeah, I think there's a metallogorgia as well, along with the crinoids. Oh, I see some. So those look like classic sheet flows. Maybe I'm mistaken, Good but light. it looks more like the photos that I've seen of sheet flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thin layers. You might actually want to turn those fans down a bit, Jaina, because uh, the water temperature is up to like 68 degrees, so you're putting, uh, turning it into a heater. Let's look up what that fish is. He's posing very nicely for us. Yeah. Or it okay. is posing. So no dorsal fin. A small unfought caudal fin and the pectoral fin is long. Okay. Probably one of the Ophidiformis, but which one? Something else near the laser? Another fish? Another fish. That's probably Halosaurid. So, 
inside. Wait, I'm loading something. Okay, I see the other, uh, I see just a hint of the other wall there coming up in the cellar. Come down uh, yeah, a few meters, see if you can light up the uh, other uh, side there. Do you say it looked like this with the dorsal fin? I'm not sure. I mean, it definitely has a dorsal fin, but... Am I, am I pulling you there? See this one? Are you able to look to the uh, east? Yeah. Basogigus. So it looks like the fish was in the genus Basogigus. But I'm going to look a little bit more to see if there's anything else that fits the. everyone just like jumping in down more than 20 meters after Hello, Kara. <laughs> back. welcome back Kara. thank you just jumping in after some ship to shore so um, was talking with some classrooms about all the cool things we're seeing and it was really fun to show what you're seeing live to, to them oh. yeah I think that you're maybe looking at like a um, a crinoid on so something uh, at some we'll point. Hold position here uh, for a minute, man. Let me get my ducks in a row here. His moves just running out there. Any um, insights into this area so far, Pashna? Uh, so I think we are now currently moving towards waypoint seven, and even though we have been seeing a qu quite a high diversity, the abundance uh, and the density has been quite low. We uh, have mm. been seeing um, the Voltaria sponges with crinoids, some metallogorgias. I'm going to uh, come under you a bit more there. And the maybe we can uh, some find the bottom fans, here. It looks like we're getting uh, closer. Some sea cucumbers. Um, then we saw, we ha there was a, uh, a while ago when we were seeing lots of cup corals. Um, Chrysogorgia, some can, sea uh, urchins, mostly two different minute. kinds of sea urchins. Um, among the sponges, it has been the elephant ear sponges or the uh, Pogon sponges, then there some Euplectelids, Volterra. We saw one branched Calophagus, uh, anemones, uh, normal true anemones, and the pom pom anemones, and Liponema, which are also true anemones. So, this is what it mostly has been uh, so far, and yeah. Right. Well, thanks for that very no. detailed rundown. <laughs> you could do like a Shannon diversity index or something <laughs> from that. <laughs> a couple of fishes, but not a lot. Well, there's a crinoid, right? Yes, we, see, we have been seeing quite a lot of crinoids and at least two different kinds. Mm. We also saw that one 
what was it, a solit solitary scleractinia? Oh, yes. Yeah, it kind of looked like a cup yeah. coral, but without the without cup part. Without the shell. Yeah, that was really Ooh. That is pretty. Cool, yeah. Wait, without yeah. the shell? So how do you know, like, um, that it doesn't have an internal I shell? Mean, it or? has an internal oh, okay. shell, like, but not the basal part. It was just oh. on the... I don't know much about them, and we had a hard time identifying yeah, it. And yeah. I think Asako, Asako helped with that. And also one. Taylor and thought that that looked like a cup curl. I was baffled. Oh, yeah. Like it is a Nidarian has tentacles somewhere there, but I don't know what. Mm. I have to go back through the photos to yeah. check it out. Yeah. Yeah, like a cup coral with more tissue than yeah. typically seen, but mm. like compressed, mm -hmm. but longitudinal kind of. Uh, okay, left a little for me. Yeah, we only saw one. So yeah. We haven't seen yeah, another one. They're quite small and can be difficult to... Now, oh, we also saw chitin. Ah. Oh, chitin. Oh, that's that's what we were <laughs> looking at through the screen. I was like, is it chitin? Is it like a polychaete? So it was yeah, a chitin. It was a chitin, Awesome. Yeah, yeah we've, we've seen a polychaete too. Yeah, um, that was on the siphon. Not the siphon, but the hydra. The solitary hydroid had a beautiful chitin. Yeah. Er, you mean polychaete? Sorry, polychaete, yeah. yeah. yes. Um. So sorry. No, it's okay. And we, ha we have a beautiful yellow crinoid, a metallogorgia with a ophiroid, a chrysogorgia at the base, uh, and uh, they look like precipitates. Just a bit more. So a lot of the names that we're using are at the phylum level, I believe. Yeah. Um, uh, no, those crinoids are. Or not this one, but earlier, like when we yeah, were talking about, okay. um, like uh, echinoderms and cnidarians, okay. right? Um, and uh, this is like one level of taxonomy. Uh, when I was taking invertebrate zoology, at the end of our semester, we had five phyla soup, five phylum soup, <laughs> our. Um, uh, amazing <laughs> teaching assistant made like a soup from like cnidarian so we had a jellyfish a crustacean <laughs> so there was like crab or something in it like some kind of mollusk and then like also i forget the other phyla but it was a very interesting soup and it actually had like a tomato base <laughs> I don't think I'll ever jellyfish. eat anything oh, like good. that <laughs> oh i didn't know that it's crunchy and salad huh? Yeah, jellyfish is strangely oh, crunchy. Oh, yeah. What kind of jellyfish is uh, eaten? Do you know that? Crunchy. <laughs> so, okay, the five phylum would be an idea. Your arthropoda, obviously, the crustaceans, uh, uh, shrimp or something. Yeah, and I was like, what else? A third would be a mollusk, maybe. Uh, would it be possible to get a zoom oh, here to yeah, see if any okay. of these are. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> to see no. if these are nodules. What would be the two other? I'll think about it. Uh, <laughs> one. I'm not sure if. Right here. Let's see when I get. To our I think our OV pilot is still dealing with some. Looks like we've uh, difficult current uh, leveled here. out here. In the okay. Our um, ROV operator. ROV operator. Right here. Yet to get a scoop. Okay, go ahead. Manganese encrusted. Yeah, but they don't look like those melted cupcakes. No, not quite. But a zoom was helpful. Oh, Val is actually saying nodules. Yeah. Okay, we'll confirm if. Uh, if so, would this be possible to scoop here? Sorry, I missed that. I was um, possible to get a scoop here? Eh. Looks pretty tight. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can get a scoop. We can try it. One way to find out. Yeah. They don't quite look like nodules look to me, but I think Val would know more than, than I would. 
No, not yet. They look like they're manganese encrusted. Can you turn on the uh, downline of it, it's not on? Get a job. Great. Okay, Portion. back out for me. Bad grab. It's all in a grab. Fortune. Um, I'm just going to change our head before we do this, so otherwise we won't be able to see as soon as we touch it. Sideways into the breeze. Just take a quick pause here in the chat to let operations focus on their sampling. Thank you, we appreciate that. You want to uh, push in there for me? So that's me moving the ROV around there. Mm -hmm. I'm also on the porch. So. Scratching my porch paint job. Surprise, it's not lava lined. <coughs> uh, you want a bit more? Yeah, maybe just a little bit more. Um, it looked like we got a pretty large piece there, so maybe right. we could get some smaller ones. Once we have the scoop started, we can might be able to. Let's 
going to uh, push the ROV back out of the way a little bit here. Perfect. What's up? Oh, I was just saying, good job. <laughs> Can I go in for us? In this case, grateful for some current. I push in there a bit on the bag. That's my laundry bag, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrificed in the name of science. That's great. I'll hollow you for your Thank sacrifice. You. Yes. Yeah, sorry, Jake. Go ahead. What'd you say? What? You happy with that? Uh, That's yeah. good. That's great. Look, you got a little starfish with you, too. Uh, and you can put that in the forward bio box. Both of them are empty. In the forward box? Yeah, if that's uh, easy. Uh, if not, we can also put it in with um, E or F on the starboard side. I forget. I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be a tight fit in the forward. Okay, yeah, we can put it in the starboard side. Um, those crazy Canadians put this hockey puck on it. They like their hockey pucks. So, with that sticking on there, it's... Oh, yeah. That's supposed to be a handle? Uh, yeah, it works really well if we have the parallel jaws on. Because right. the parallel jars aren't, aren't big enough to get around the entire scoop. Right. But, but we also use that. Uh, so the reason we left it on there is we use that to secure it to the porch. We thought about taking it off, but then it makes it harder to... And it comes secure. loose during the dive if it gets bumped. So. Okay, you can go wide and... Uh, Let's have a look at that box there, see if we can... Maybe we can put it in with Jacob's rock. Do you want to hit the sample cell though for me?
Yeah. Okay. And that was sample number 078. Thanks, Taylor Ann. No problem. And that was starboard box F, correct? Yes. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Starboard F, yeah. Uh, porches all the way in, right? Porches all the way in, down lights all. Right. I think, right. I think, I think we're, oops, wrong button. Uh, I think we're good for a move to the north. What's your heading now, Jacob? North? It is north. Yeah, so north will take us away from the wall behind us. North. Thank you, front row. Yeah. And thank Other. you, Val and Lounge, for the input. <laughs> I wouldn't have recognized those as nodules. That's an important sample. Kanaloa is the name of the god of the sea, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so thank correct. you, Kanaloa, for that as well. Is this a bird? Uh, Brasingid? Yes, that is a Brasingid and there's a Crinoid right. to the to its right as well and uh, another sea star on the rocks. Sea star on Ophiroid, I'm not sure from a distance, but it's interesting that we are seeing different kinds of echinoderms in the same frame. Are the, are the Crinoid and the Brasingid related? No, the sea star and the Brasingid are related. Uh, okay. So the percentages look like crinoids, but are actually sea stars. Oh, okay. So the percentage is a sea star, and the crinoid is the sea lily. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I believe they're both the kind of derbs, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So they are related it broad, All more broadly. Kind of yeah. But different uh, class. Or orders that we check. And we had a question for Dan if if you're able to take one at this moment. Yeah, um, seeing the different kinds of sampling methods, um, I think that was the first 